Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting up the Dark Apostle from the new Combat Patrol box set for Chaos. I assembled up to the point that it would get in the way of painting, so for the Dark Apostle he's entirely assembled except his backpack, his head, and his uh, pistol that's on his left thigh. And then the acolytes are fully built except for the one that has the chain. His arms are separate from his body and attached to the chains. And I of course primed it with a bright touch general purpose gray card primer. Alright, with Eschen Gray, Gray Seer, and White Scar White and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint the model. So what basically what it is with an airbrush, I paint the dark color underneath, the bright color above, and then I dry brush with white scar, and then I take Lamian Medium mixed with a little bit of white scar and I paint straight solid lines on some places that I couldn't get the dry brush on the edges right, basically to strengthen some lines and stuff. So this is the pre-coating. Now, the reason why I'm going with Eschen Gray is as a much darker one is because I want the shadows to work uh, to be darker and grays here. So instead of using Pallid Witch Flesh, the reason why I'm using it this time is because I wonder if the highlights will be more visible if there's an even further contrast of color between the highlight and white scar white which is the pure white and so uh, dropping down the color of white from pallid to gray sear I believe the white scar white is going to be more prominent that's the theory anyway Alright, with Lamian Medium, Doombull Brown, Burnt Umber for an oil wash, and even though I show grace here, I actually do not use it because well, things change after a bit. So basically, I create a wash between Lamian Medium and Doombull Brown, sort of one-to-one -one with a little bit of water to make it flow, and I apply it all over his uh, robes and stuff, as well as the robes on the acolytes, except for uh, one of them's arms, the one that's holding the chain. And then once that's done, I use Burnt Umber as a wash, a thick wash, and I apply it all over to add shading. And then I go with Doombull Brown and I do a highlight on, well, most of the stuff. Or, well, actually, I don't, if I recall. So here's what happened. I didn't use the Doombull Brown because the highlights from the pre-coating were showing very well because the... So here's what happened. Because I used Gray Sear instead of Pallid Witch Flesh, the contrast between the white and the light color of the bodies, the contrast was much higher. And so the highlights were much brighter than normal. And so instead of using gray here, because that wouldn't work because white with the Doombull Brown would turn it to a pink, I then found a different color to use. And so with Gorthor Brown mixed with some gray here, I then applied it as the highlights, and it worked well. The colors worked well. So this Gorthor Brown is a much lighter uh, brown, and it fit really well with the Doombull Brown and the undercoating that I made. Mixed with gray here, of course. Alright, now with Corvus Black, which is an off black and Lamy medium, I create a wash. Now my normal proportions for washes is, uh, I have some eyedroppers or stuff, so it's one brush worth of the color, two drops of Lamian, and one drop of water. But this one I added three drops of Lamian, so it would be even more diluted, the color, essentially. And so what happened is, is I apply essentially two flat coats of this onto the armor, as well as the guy's robes, the stuff that's still left white, and their shoes. And so I somewhat consider this a failure because I essentially had to paint the model twice. And if we're going for speed painting, that isn't very good. 10 models becomes 20, essentially, in workload. But it turned out, well, I applied one coat. It was thin, but it left its mark. Then I applied a second coat once it was completely dried, and it, f it, it did pretty good with highlighting and stuff like that. Thank you. 
All right, now trying something. Liquitex Gloss Varnish, the Transparent Burnt Sienna, and now the Vallejo Acrylic Metal Color Duraluminum, which is a very bright white instead of the Runefang Steel. I want to try this. So I basically tried one drop of this Duraluminum, two drops of the Transparent Burnt Sienna, and around three drops of Liquitex, and of course a drop of water to make it flow better. I wanted to try the Vallejo Metal Color, and it's so-so. The shine mostly comes from the Liquitex, because the Liquitex ink really gets rid of the shine of metals and dulls it heavily. And so essentially when I added this in here, I had to paint it twice. So all this gold detailing, I had to paint it twice to get a good solid coat of the color, which isn't that good. And now with Vallejo Metal Color, Gunmetal Gray, I'm now going to apply this onto, well, the metal chains, metal pieces, uh, things like that scattered around uh, parts of the guy's backpack and his, uh, the gaps between his armor. I don't know what those are called. All right, now with Burnt Umber and Lamp Black, we're gonna make a wash. It's mostly gonna be brown with a little bit of black to darken it, so it's a very dark brown. Uh, just a little bit of black because the black is so strong and pigmented that it'll easily overpower the Burnt Umber. And so essentially we, what we do is we just do our basic. We apply a wash all over the model, essentially. The uh, the armor and the, uh, the, armor and the gold filigree. Uh, we apply this all over and also on the cultists arms and legs that had black and once we do that we then wipe the major sections of the model that's that's visible that's easy to see and then we apply another coat of this wash all over to build up the layers and build up uh, depth and shadow and it works out pretty well Alright, with Karak Stone, Mornfang Brown, Ushtabi Bone, Ushabti, whatever, Screaming Skull, and Burnt, or Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, whichever this paint is. And essentially what we do is we're going to paint the parchment and the book on the Dark Apostle. And also don't forget that one of the Acolytes has two scrolls on his back. I forgot, and then I had to bring out the paints again to redo it. So, so essentially what we do is... Carrick Stone is a base layer. Mornfang Brown is actually uh, used on the book. There's like this 
thin border on the front pages. I, I don't know how that makes sense, but I just apply one layer of Morphing Brown on the lines there. Fits that. And then we apply the wash, oil wash of the burnt uh, sienna umber thingy. And then uh, what we do is we just apply it all over it, letting it pool though. We want it to pool into the letters and in some of the recesses and places where it can just hold naturally. And then once that dries, we then go back with Carrick Stone. We basically highlight 90% of everything. We then go back with Ustabi Bone on the highlights and cover pretty much half of everything. Over brushing, not dry brushing, on some areas. Painting the edges of the paper, the most distinct folds, and the open planes. And then with Screaming Skull, we do fine highlights on the most raised and most prominent areas to catch the eye. Alright, with Contrast Paint Griffhound Orange, uh, we're going to fill in some of the letters and symbols on his parchment and his book. Now, I just wanted a Contrast Paint or Wash because it can easily flow into the recesses and I don't want to undo all the good work I did. And this is an orange, you can do red, you can, it basically, I'm, this is a matter of taste. Maybe I should have gone a little darker, but this is an orangish, bright kind of orangish, so it kind of worked. Maybe a little redder would have been better, but... Alright, with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Urshade and XV88, we're going to paint uh, the leather. So he has his gun in a holster, uh, wrap around his left thigh, the acolytes have a belt, some have, well, one of them has like a pouch and stuff like that. So basically what we're going to do is apply Mornfang Brown, then we're going to apply Agrax Urshade over, then we're going to go back with Mornfang Brown and we're going to paint the edges. We're basically painting 70 to 80% of, of each piece. With a belt, is pretty much 90%. Then we're going to go with one-to-one -one of Mornfang and XV88. We're going to paint heavily on the edges, uh, like ridges and stuff throughout the most raised areas, trying to pick out details. And then finally with XV88 on the most raised areas or edges and details, uh, just to catch the light. Now with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Wild Rider Red, we're going to paint the candles. So we're going to paint the entirety of the candles with Corn Red. Then with Mephiston Red, we're going to paint straight lines on the front and back and on the top uh, parts of the melted wax. And then with Wild Rider Red, we're going to paint a thin line along the tops where the wax is. And I, I don't show it here, but I figured this out on the other piece is that uh, with Wild Rider, instead of painting a straight line, do little taps in a line and it looks better going up, making a fine line highlight on the front and back of each candle. Alright, now with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Averland Sunset, Uriel Yellow, and Dorn Yellow, I'm going to paint the flames. Now this ended up as a mess a bit, because just a lot of colors and a lot of things had trouble transitioning. Oh, and also some Agrax Earthshade, because I needed it later. So basically I apply Corn Red over the entirety of all the flames. Then I take Mephiston Red and I apply it uh, probably like a third or most of the flames in order to build a highlight. Then I realized that the corn red isn't dark enough and the depth isn't really there. So I take some Agrax or a shade water down and I just apply it all over the flames just to add some extra depth. Then I go with uh, Everland Sunset and then I apply it um, around half-ish or on the fire that's dripping down from the book, sort of covering like half on both sides of the flames. 
And then with Uriel Yellow, I highlight the Averland Sunset, and then with Dorn Yellow, I apply a little bit on more rate on the most raised areas and peaks and stuff of fire to make it look nice, I guess. Uh, the only issues with this is it kind of was messy because these yellow colors are not the easiest to work with, uh, so it looks a little. The color isn't solid in areas and stuff. Maybe I should have mixed. Eh, that wouldn't have worked very well. It, it, this was a little messy. This paint job, the came, paint came out a little messy. That's what I'm saying. Now, now, with Cadian Flesh Tone, Agrax Earthshade, Pallid Witch Flesh, and Lamine Medium, we're going to paint the faces, and at the same time battle the ever-present difficulty of trying to get the camera to focus in on very small things I'm trying to paint, and not get taken out by my larger hands. So, basically, we're going to apply Cadian Flesh Tone mixed with Lamine Medium to create a wash. We're going to apply around two coats, because it's going to be very thin, it's going to show the gray skin underneath. And don't forget the Acolytes, and one of the Acolytes that has his face covered in metal, he has his back of his head is shaved and open, and his hands are open out there, so paint those as well. So essentially, here's the overall process. Cadian Flesh Tone, like two coats because of how thin I made it. You might only have to do with one if you mix it right. And then I apply Agrax Earthshade all over, mixed with a little bit of Lamine Medium to help it pool better or flow better. And then we're going to highlight the raised areas with Cadian Flesh Tone. Then we're going to apply another layer of Agrax Earthshade with Lamine Medium. And then we're going to do another highlight with Cadian Flesh Tone. And then, if you want to, you can do a couple spots, uh, like drop a little spots here and there of the Agrax Earthshade and Lamine Medium, some darker shading. It depends on how well your mix is, because this is really, uh, this is not entirely uh, pure science, because sometimes the mixes are not perfect, and so you kind of have to roll with the punches. But once you get a good balance of shading and highlighting, and then I mix Cadian Flesh Tone mixed with Pallid Witch Flesh, and of course Lamine Medium there to make it flow better, and then I do a fine highlight on the most raised cheekbones, uh, parts of the head, face, jaw, basically I'm painting straight lines, or thin dots in a line, that sometimes works better, to create the bright face and features, because I noticed that the guy on the cover has a very bright face. Alright, with Lamian Medium, Griffhound Orange, and Magos Purple, which is a very weak purple, I basically made a small mix of one part Griffhound to two parts Magos because it's very weak, and then I add a little Lamian Medium in it to make it flow better. And then I applied this onto his horns and the chaos symbol on his forehead, uh, just to add some color. Alright, the model is pretty much done at this point, so I want to talk about theory, essentially what's going on for it. So, the box set has 19 models, and so I chose the Dark Apostle because it's like the single character, and I can focus on him more because he's just one model, well, and his acolytes. And so, going forward, when I, uh, basically after I did the armor and the metal, before the paper parts of him, I thought the model was pretty dull, because the colors came out, well, pretty dull, even the metal was pretty dull. And so... It, the model itself looked lackluster, even though a lot of highlight, shading, all the details were picked out, but it wasn't as bright as could be. So there needs to be good shading and there needs to be good highlights. So there's a, the highs are high and the lows are low, basically, in colors. But then once I did the papers and stuff, they were highlighted so well it sort of like brought out, it made it look better. And so I did some experimenting back and forth and stuff, and as a single model character, it wasn't that big of a deal. But the fact is, I had to paint the armor twice and the metal filigree twice. So that is technically a failure, or kind of an issue when it comes to painting the 15 infantry that also come in the box, it's in the future. Uh, so one thing I did to brighten it up a little bit, I actually didn't show it because it was experimenting and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do now, but I will mention it. I basically took a metal paint called Rune Lord Brass and I mixed in some Rune Fang Steel Air and it matched very close to a highlight of this brass color I made. And so with that I highlighted just the most raised areas, edges and stuff, and also some parts where the uh, metal paint wore off from me touching it a lot. So that's just something I wanted to point out here. I didn't show the process because it was really just a bunch of random experimenting of me going back and forth and it's really difficult to like capture on camera. So that's why you don't see it here. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I then varnish all the non-metallic metals throughout 
all the models. Oh, and I also fully assembled them and glued them onto bases. By the way, I also bought these bases uh, from Colts, printed them out, rather a little bit disappointed, but I paid money for it, so I might as well use it after printing it. I'll go a little more into that later. And done. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, interesting model. So let, let's. This has been a more interesting stuff. So I broke my usual method of painting. Uh, normally, I would uh, seal the model in with my AK Interactive before I went to the metals. However, the metals it would have been easier to apply oil washes on them as well as the armor at the same time. Otherwise, it would be just a very difficult, redundant step of applying too many coats or managing washes spilling over. So it made sense to paint the metal and the armor and then apply the wash after the fact. Eh, the process was... Uh, yeah, chaos is always tricky with all these metal stuff and filigree and so the model overall came out pretty good and successful despite, mm, I guess, not really setbacks but disappointments essentially. The only problem is I had to essentially paint this model twice, and that's going to be miserable for the speed painting. So I'm going to move on to the Hellbrute next because it's a single model, so I'm going to try to see if I can make the pigmentation of the metals and the armor thicker on the paint job so I only have to do it in one. But now, there were a few things I didn't I skipped over on camera because it was just small dumb details. Like he had like a black wire here and there, and one of the acolytes also had into his skull. It's like, okay, painted that black. Um, apart from that a few things on camera I didn't get but it wasn't that important as far as the bases go uh, this is one thing I bought these on cults these were like uh, well they were they call them the blood god bases and they kind of fit chaos the problem is that these bases are not that good they like look, look really good in the digital files but when I printed them out they're very uh, flat which is good for being able to place like your models onto them because you don't want like uneven surfaces but like the details and stuff apart from the skulls there's like these spines everywhere and femur bones and stuff like that and rocks and like these small ones are really just not present and so they kind of just uh, the it's noticeable going from games workshop to something non games workshop just a bunch of small details but like this is one of the other reasons why I like playing games workshops up is I actually like their model style all right now back to the model overall I'm gonna have to say 8 out of 10 the fire holds it back a bit. It was kind of messy in the way it came out. Uh, normally I would use uh, dry brushing with some washes and stuff or airbrush to do it better, but I couldn't really do that on this model safely or at any point where I think I could do it uh, in an easy workflow. Uh, overall, 8 out of 10, but it barely makes it over. Just, uh, yeah, just the fire. The bases are okay. They're detailed, but not that good. Uh, I'm not talking about me painting it, like the bases just weren't as good as I thought they would be. Um, yeah, overall 8 out of 10, this could have been a 9 out of 10, maybe if the fire was better and the bases were better. I'm probably just going to print out a bunch of skulls and it's just random rocks to add more character to the bases, because I seem to be able to make bases better than print them. Alright, so that's it for this model. He actually came out pretty good and I'm happy with his face. So like the video if you like the video, comment if you want to comment, share it if you want to share it, uh, or any nitpick and such, and uh, see you soon. Bye.